Good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> I want to read a, a quote uh, by Billy Brim. Um, many of you might know who she is, but she's a, uh, a great teacher, prophetess, um, teacher um, of the Bible, all these sort of things. She, her, she's, her, her past, uh, right now she's, I'm not sure if she's in her 80s also, I believe she is, um, but I'm, I'm not sure. But anyway, <laughs> I'd like to say I think I'm older than she is, but I'll just, then I thought, I don't know if I want to <laughs> brag on that or not, but anyway, the main thing that I wanted to say is that she's a, she's a great and trusted Bible teacher, has had she uh, came up through the Kenneth Hagin ministry and also um, is a, a beloved uh, part of um, Kenneth Copeland's ministry. But she has her own ministry. Um, she kind of lives in the, um, the mountains of uh, Arkansas, I believe, but um, she spent a lot of years in Oklahoma and her son pastors a church there in Oklahoma also. And some of you may be familiar with her, but... Um, she made this quote, and I'll just, I had printed out a copy of it, so you can actually read it, and I'll read it backwards. It says, the signs are so evident now that I'm overwhelmed with just how quickly things are progressing prophetically. I truly believe that we are that generation that will see all things come to pass. Pass. So, um... I wanted you to just hear that statement. Um, I believe all of us who 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 have um, come through what we've come through, things of that nature. Um, it just seems overwhelming as I'm in the Word of God and as I'm praying and and hearing things in the Spirit of God. It just becomes I'm having to fix that microphone camera a little bit. Uh, it just seems with the things that are going on in the world today, I'm not saying that it'll happen tomorrow, but I'm saying that what we, what I grew up with calling the end times um, or the coming of the Lord, and there's probably some definitions here that get lost in translation depend on, depending on how you've grown up and whether or not you have, have kept in touch with things and how people um, speak to things today. If you stay in the Word of God, you see these things coming to pass. As God said, when you see these things come to pass, know this, know that, uh, be aware of that, all these kinds of things, that these are, are signs that we need, there's some things that we need to do. And maybe even if that was the, the people in that were before me, like my, my parents or my grandfather and and all these, I think that's as far as the the Christian history goes. But and being a born again Christian um, and filled with the Holy Ghost is concerning. Um, I believe that that there are times in every place where you can see the symptoms, if I can put it that way, or indications that things could go certain ways. But it's come now to the point where that so many things in the Bible are so accurately portrayed in the um, activities we see all around us, uh, in the church, um, in the world, uh, in governments. Uh, we've seen all kinds of things go on since the time that the Bible was uh, put into print, but it was written long before that, and that's talking Old Testament and New. So I want I want to make sure that, that all of us are, are not just thinking that this is something way off in another generation. I believe, truthfully, I believe that I will see many of these things with my eyes, but the things that I would like to see with my eyes also are the things that say to the Lord that we are preparing, not just for ourselves, but we are about the Master's business. We are out in the places where that we understand either how to 
to make sure the harvest of the Lord comes in, but most of all that we are sowing seeds that will cause the harvest to prosper, that we are um, uh, a place of torrents of rain and all kinds of things that, that will cause the gospel in all aspects to come to pass not only in uh, our personal church, but in the uh, all the churches and in all the countries and kindred tongues, um, backgrounds, all that sort of stuff all over the world. Uh, we don't have to get panicked. We don't have to. <clears throat> the main thing we need to do is to make sure that what's in our hearts is something that that God will be able in our our conviction to God, but also our access in the Lord and in the Spirit. Yes, in prayer, most definitely in prayer, because these are places where we learn, and in the Word of God, learn how to to wear our armor properly, how to use it properly, uh, how to uh, not be overwhelmed, and to cause others not to be overwhelmed in their situations of their lives or the things that are coming upon the earth. Um in studying something else that I was actually going to actually had in my heart, and I will say what it is, um, because it all applies here. <laughs> this is kind of a strange piece of paper I have. It goes on forever, but um, I had, only thing that was available to me when this this came to to my consciousness was my calendar that sits to my right over here. And um, so I just, it has a place for notes, so I took notes on it. But what I heard was this, that, and you think, well, yeah, it's a scripture. Well, yeah, but it was like, it was, it wasn't just a quotient, quotation of scripture or an application of it. It was like putting something together. And even out of that, I was, looked at that, prayed about it for several weeks. And just the other day, I began to see some things that go beyond just a quotation. And I'm not sure that I'll get into that part of it, but I felt like that it was important that we understood um, some things um, today. And then we can go beyond that uh, as the Lord would lead. And what I wrote down was, Faith comes through hearing. I know that's a scripture. I didn't write down the scripture because I was just writing down what was in my coming through my spirit. Faith comes through hearing. Faith works through love. It was like, well, I won't try to describe it, but sometimes the Lord presents things in ways that are not just a statement, but it's introduction in for us to come to understanding of something that we just quote. He then said that confession of faith only works when we walk in love. And that's what I mean. Coming toward a place that God wanted me to consider, contemplate, ask about, and not just try to explain on the spur of the moment. Like, oh yeah, I know that. Yeah, faith comes through hearing. And let's go look at that scripture and let's, yep, let's, and let's see some evidence of it. And uh, yeah, faith works through love. Well, let's see w about what love is and what works is and, and all this thing. And a lot of times we're thinking we understand what faith is. So sometimes there's a lot of things that we can quote or a lot of things we can say, but we are a little bit short on not just an explanation from Strong's or from a concordance or from a commentary written or even putting all the scriptures together, um, there's a personal activity of the Spirit of the Lord in us that is available to us if we're not what I would have called perhaps in the past heady, you know, just trying to keep everything up here in our mind, organize it here, have all the right answers to, to answer this, you know, what do we give, what kind of scriptures do we pray when we're going to pray about this, or what kind of scriptures do we go quote to someone who uh, just got diagnosed with an illness or, or or is having trouble with their children and how would you, you know, or 
you know, needs a job, all those kind of things. It's not wrong to, to know those things, but you have to have a relationship with them. Just as like you have to have a relationship with the Word of God. And it's not because you just love to read, or you love to study, or, um, you know, you, you just love to kind of be able to put things in a nutshell for people and, and or for yourself, okay, this this means I'm believing, this is what I do, and, and but a lot of times we find out the what we do, but we, we don't often look to see what the things that hinder. And when we're just thinking that the Word of God is something we use to get things, that we use the Word of God, um, hearing the Word of God, and a lot of us read the Word of God, but do we, when you read, you're not reading there by yourself. You're not sitting in church necessarily by yourself. Yes, the preacher or a teacher or whatever we might be in those places, but we should be bringing something not just by what we brought out of a commentary, but that comes through the activity of the Spirit of God giving us understanding that the spirit that comes through this word and the spirit that is the one who leads us into these things, leads us into all the truth, the scripture says, is actually, we're not just becoming um, an expert about something. This thing becomes who we are. We have a relationship with the voice of God, with the understanding of God, with the works of God. All these kinds of things enter into something. So, because we can become dogmatic over a scripture, over a teaching that somebody does, which is absolutely accurate, but the motive of our heart doesn't mean that it could reveal that the, um, that activity was just something we remembered we taught it to our brains it's in our brains but our our activity of our minds so to speak the enemy's always in there to try to bring in other situations that then by the time a situation arises where those things are pertinent to become in motion we're always on the the cuff. Well, I don't know. Maybe God didn't hear me. Well, I'm not sure God will do this about that. I'm not sure. And so right away, the faith isn't in a safe place in your spirit. But it, when it, so when it's attacked, that you can pray, so you can call out to God. You can you can begin to work on your really not work on, but speak from your relationship with God, from the truth of the Word of God, from the evidences that God has already established in you in these things. So it's it's not just hearing the Word spoken. You need to have a relationship, not just going to church and hearing somebody because I, you know, I mean, a lot of times I'm the one, seems like talking to you guys, but I listen to a lot of things. And sometimes my mind wanders, and sometimes they'll say something, and I'm thinking, and then I'm trying to go ahead of them and use all the scriptures and not hear the anointing of the Holy Spirit, how it wants to teach me something. And when I'm taught, does it mean that I know it? So let me just move on this down, down on this a little bit. Faith comes through hearing. Faith works through love. Yeah, Lord, that's right. <clears throat> confessions of faith and then he said confessions of faith only work when when he was speaking to me and I put it down in the third person here that was really kind of me really <laughs> so this is how I heard it was confessions of faith only work when you walk in love okay now I can tell you when you walk in love <laughs> but I had to hear it from me but it because I kind of was this was just at my desk. I had walked. I was sitting here, so I wrote sideways on this thing. And when, when I when I heard that last thing, that confessions of faith only work when you walk in love. I kind of stopped what I was doing, and I realized I wasn't just quoting something from my mind. That God was putting something putting me into remembrance of something he put me into a motion of something that he wanted not to deal with me like in a bad place but to to I don't know teach is one thing yes uh, so that I could teach yeah 
but I believe it has more that I have a revelation that I can live, something that lives in me, the revelation of how, not how, just for meaning how, but just, just a revelation that he wants me to not just be able to quote, not be able to agree to, just to find scriptures to, but, and, but I did, I did that, but it was because in those in those settings, I'm going to learn more about faith. I'm going to learn more about hearing, both in the positive and in the negative, because a lot of times we see in the scriptures, God spoke to someone, but they didn't listen. Of course, <laughs> uh, we would never do a thing like that. Well, we don't mean to, but sometimes other things have become more important, and sometimes the place... We didn't, the times that God, we had available to us, we didn't take them. Or at that time, we were just dealing on the, you know, taking care of our daily prayer or do a little Bible reading, realizing that that we are the sons and daughters of God through Jesus Christ. If we have so confessed his lordship, then our walking with him is not just a matter of, it's not a religious duty. It is a relationship. And when we do it like we understand maybe religious, we just do it as a routine. Like even going to church, you can go to church. I, even me as a minister, I can just prepare for something and go to it there. And But if, if I'm just going to try to give what I've gotten out of something and don't allow the Holy Spirit to, to bring things into a place and don't realize that, um, how God is trying to speak to not just me, but to, to everyone, um, that the church has a responsibility um, to be something. And that's where I see sometimes we have failed, but I have to say where I have failed. But God doesn't look at me as a failure. I can't say, well, I failed to do this. But God just said, no, you, you just, you didn't hear me. You didn't believe me. Uh, you didn't under, let me give you an understanding. You just had words that you could say, and they were right words, and you expect other people to do that. But there's something that when you look at a word like faith and you work, you look at a word like love, you know they're not just language expressions. They are realities. They are how you operate, Lord father they're how you dealt with jesus and how he dealt with you faith and love so there's depths to these things and the scripture gives us a lot of understanding we see a lot of things about love because that's the operative work we can see more and more about faith and we can then not just use a scripture but look at what's been in our thoughts what's been in our hearts about people, about situations, about are we afraid? Are our situations, do, is my saying that the times of the end are, are here? Um, does it make you afraid? Did you panic? Then, you know, don't just, don't just cry or weep, but, but come to the Lord and say, Lord, I realize this, that, or the other. I've had to say many times, and of late, even, um, Father, there's just been times where I've, I haven't, I haven't really, I've heard you, but I really didn't, I thought I knew what you were talking about. And I thought I knew how to deal with it. But every situation has its little, um, we would say nuances, but every, every person we deal with is, is different. So we need to hear from the Lord, we need to be hearing and we need to know how to deal with him over matters and even let him deal with us. Well, anyway, that was a long explanation I didn't know I was going into. <laughs> um, but God began to speak to me about some other things, too. Um, and that's what I had intended to speak on, per se, the next time we had an opportunity to be together like this. I didn't see it as maybe a Sunday thing, but I never know these days. I kind of just, I find out a lot of things are because I need to hear them. But, but, but one thing came in my um, awareness this morning. It's from 
Proverbs chapter 4. And I have right here where I was looking at it when God reminded me about it. I have the King James Version. So, in chapter 4, of course me, I get so busy sometimes reading before and going on that I get a little too involved. <laughs> but the scripture we're going to is Proverbs chapter 4, as I said, and verse 23. And of course, I went back looking, you know, that's the where it says wisdom is the principal thing, um, you know, exalt her, all these things. But by the time I got to 23, I read it just by itself. And it says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And then it goes on, and I'll read these things too. But I, I went back then just for a little bit. And God gives in that, in that Proverbs chapter 4, talks about wisdom. But it says that we need to have the, that wisdom. And it's not a level of intelligence. These things are spirit things. You realize that it's our spirit that makes us. That's where we're born again, is we have a new spirit. So all these other things, when God says renew, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. In other words, your mind needs to be renewed by your spirit so it can agree with spiritual things and agree to cast out all those things that came through the through the natural mind or through your natural circumstances or from your inheritances through the flesh as a child and a daughter and all that's so a father with a father and daughter etc and as you deal with your own offspring but anyway in verse 13 of proverbs um well here i am okay so i'll go back over here uh, verse 11 says, I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. I believe in a way, uh, people, friends, <laughs> um, I believe that we are in the last days. I believe, I know there'll be days that will remain as far as uh, time is concerned after uh, Jesus comes to bring the, the church who has readied themselves uh, back into the kingdom of God so we can be um, in those places where we won't talk about. I th sometimes feel like that that I have failed uh, in a way, and I don't mean that, oh, I feel like a failure. That's not what I'm saying. But I haven't perhaps heard from God as acutely as I need to about some of the things, yes, that I need to be reminded of. But, you know, the truth of the matter is when I learned a lot of these things, I was a, a different person, so to speak, at a different age level. Circumstances were different. Um, I've been through things. The world has changed tremendously. And very fastly is it transforming into something that I never knew. I never heard. I never believed we would be as a nation or as people, even friends or families, that we would, um, would not be able to hear the, the right heart of God in a matter so that we could deal with people not making enemies so they may not like how what we believe but we can be something that the power of God and the, the activity of the Holy Spirit can be so pertinent that our love for God is not something we're just trying to get other people saved about but but our love for God brings a truth hallelujah from our spirits and not from just our fears or our our you know 
winning souls doesn't become a count of how many. But I'm glad they get saved. But we all know that we need to grow. So our prayer needs to include those that we have witnessed to. And not to to be like us, but to be in the place to, the people would surround them that would be able to lead them in a fullness of what would be pleasing to God for the things that he has written about them in their books. Anyway, <clears throat> when you go, thy steps should not be straightened. And I think that means confined to just, you know, just to one one thing that you need to as it says in another place, and probably needs to learn how to walk circumspectfully. I don't mean walk circumspectfully in every circumstance, and you have to experience this. I don't mean, but work, walk circumspectfully with the Spirit, with the Word of God, with yourself. Be honest inside of yourself. Um, don't hold to ways and and um, and strongholds. Don't be in strongholds of fear or strongholds of pride don't be um self-sufficient or the only the expert in something um yep sometimes we have to, to correct or lead but there's a way to do that in love that doesn't allow the devil time to to snare someone along the way take fast hold of instruction let her not go. <laughs> now, this is a King James. Keep her, for she is thy life. And this is instruction. It goes into wisdom later, but okay, let's hear this. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Well, do you, do I, am I going to define that? No. I think by now, most who hear this will know that, um, and it's not just doctrinally so, but it's the things that go against the character and the nature of God. Now, if you've been taught things that God does this, God does that, um, that maybe are not scriptural, then that's another, another thing. But you need to pray. You need to be before God. Because I believe the Holy Spirit... Um, especially when you're when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, but I believe the Holy Spirit still will quicken because the Holy Spirit's in the Word of God. And and I believe he'll quicken to ourselves. That's that wasn't really the way to deal with that person. Those were kind of those weren't the weren't right words, uh, you know, that kind of thing. And then ask the Lord, don't just push it off or then or feel so, oh, I didn't do right. Don't get off on those. Those are snares of the enemy. Hallelujah. It says, um, avoid and pass that way, the, the way of wicked men. Avoid it, pass not by it. Turn from it and pass on by it, pass away from it. And I believe there's some things in our, our, our characters and our nature uh, that have been developed over the years that sometimes even as Christians we are so used to being a certain way we don't see or understand that it's not um, it doesn't enhance the character and the nature of God it doesn't enhance a testimony uh, or anything of that nature that we may that we may be speaking to someone plus it also gets us in trouble when we're praying about things in our own life. If it's just surface and we're easy to, to get angry or to gossip or to have an attitude, and we don't realize that that hinders our prayer even. So things like that are, are places for us to realize that God gives us instruction. Great grace is given to us. God doesn't condemn us. He doesn't hate us. He doesn't not talk to us. He won't not heal us, all those sort of things. But these things hinder the fullness of what God has, has meant in, of himself in our lives. Um, I'm not going to go all through that, but it goes ahead and talks about d different things that that kind of an attitude and, and that kind of a situation, when you don't hold fast to the instruction of, of the word of God and the life 
and the, the power of the blood of Jesus and the accuracy of the Holy Spirit when he's in our lives. It says in verse 18, But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. These are all scriptures I remember because we came mainly from the King James when I was brought up. And then it goes into other things. But I love in verse 20, and I can remember, I believe it was when I graduated from high school, someone gave me um, a Bible, and in the Bible they had written these words from Proverbs. My son, attend to my words, and incline thine ear unto my sayings. We have a lot of sayings, don't we? I have a lot of sayings. And sometimes we say inside of ourselves, not out loud. And those are the th sayings we need to be careful of, where they came from. Because if they disregard the activity of God, then they're going to hinder the activity of the faith that we have heard. It will alter the way we hear faith, alter the way we get instruction about faith even to the point where that the enemy can come in and cause us to think that we don't have any because this didn't happen or because this is still in inside of me it's not it's faith is 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 not a pill you take hallelujah it's an activity of the spirit of god that causes us to live hallelujah because faith is from god it says have the faith of god if you have the faith of God, these things will, can be through this. You can do it through this way and know that it will come to pass. But when we begin to go into worry, God doesn't worry. When we're hate, hateful or hate somebody, God is not hateful. He hates evil. And when we go into that place of not liking someone like that, then that becomes an activity of, of evil not the way God and the life of God in you is is to conduct itself because your spirit goes that way the mind or the attitudes that that are in us will the enemy will use them try to use them but let's make sure we don't use them to go against the the the, the word of God faith comes by hearing hearing by the word of God hallelujah careful how we quote so that it becomes understandable and we we in, we breathe it in and not just breathe it out it can breathe in us while it's the breath of faith that comes out of us okay okay sherry go on um let them not depart from thy eyes keep them in the midst of thine heart you see here is where god's word that can speak so that we can hear and faith can rise up in us and grow in us and become not just affected by a quotation, but because there's a relationship with God. There's a there's another word that we're not going to get to to get to where I was going. <laughs> um, for they are life unto those that find them and health to all their flesh. Whoa. So you can see how faith, how the word of faith, how speaking, how praying in the name, in the name of Jesus, all these things that we're, we're that come in the, the motion of living our new life in Christ, that is still we get we get to grow up into it, but it's 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 it never fades. It's eternal. <laughs> so keep your heart. Here it is in verse twenty three. Oh, I mean, I should read these. For they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. And a lot of people get into unbelief. They get into accusations against God because they speak faith words to a being healed, and it doesn't seem to take place immediately. Well, that's that's the activity of 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 the of the heart. It's the mind is trying to argue that God said this would happen. Well, it will happen. It will come to pass. Some things they come to pass right away. But even those that are that are healed through the healing lines and things. And years ago, being um, growing up with the well, I won't go into all that. But growing up in in the times of Oral Roberts and 
and and others of that, even some before him, um, that would come to our churches or we would go to meetings when they were in our town or close to close to it. Um, and then at that time, some of them came to to the churches too. Uh, uh, Catherine Kuhlman uh, was in a an Assembly of God church that was um, was pastored by a, a relative, but it wasn't the church that I came from. But we went there for that. It was a and and that's the first time I saw her. So, but it says here in verse twenty three. And what I was trying to say that you have to realize that the word of God is not just a taking a pill. It's something that changes you from the inside. It's something where you become, you become active in the faith of God so that the faith of God is, is, is in your, in your ways and in your dealings and in your words. And most of all, in your thinking, the mind gets renewed. But verse 23 says, keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. And that's why I want our, my attention, at least from this thing, of course, the next thing that it says, and I'm going to say it in verse 24, says, put away from thee a forward, F-R-O-W-A-R-D, mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Verse 25 says, let, let your eyes look right on and let your eyelid, eyelids look straight before thee. And it goes on to say, you need to consider the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Turn not right to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. And then in chapter 5, it starts out, my son, attend to my wisdom. And bow thine ear to my understanding. It's not so much just knowing what, but you need to understand the working of faith. You need to understand the workings of love, etc. And of course, it goes on to um, to say, may your that your lips that you mayest re regard discretion, that thy lips may keep. The knowledge that comes from this wisdom and you don't just talk and get into places of bitterness and, and arrogance and all those kinds of things but from that scripture in proverbs 4 23 is where i want us to just take a few moments to look at because you know that it says um jesus says in the new testament in particular and i don't remember the scripture right now sorry it's I didn't go look it up, and there are some things that can slip by me a little bit these days. But in Proverbs 4.23, we read it um, in the King James. I don't, I didn't get out my other translations. So we're going to read it again. Keep your heart or guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. So these are the places, I think the one thing, and I think we're going to go probably pretty quickly here, but um, there's one thing that, that I see in the places where we are, in the times we're in, and all the issues that are before the people in the United States and the people in the world, because we know that things that we're right now in a place where there's been some horrid atrocities that are taking place in Israel. And all over the news media, you can get different takes on it. And a lot of them are saying that none of it's true, that Israel's just lying, that Israel. But here's a place where you guard your heart. You have to understand that in, in, in God, God has, he's talking about something through which even our salvation has come from. And that is through the activity that he has and the covenants that he's had of uh, through what became the nation of what we call Israel. Um, but it comes, it still comes even from, from, if I can put it this way, from before the foundations of the world, it came. And it came, it was in the activity in the Garden of Eden. It was in the activity um, 
where where Satan entered that garden <clears throat> and caused Adam and, and Eve, the, the man and the woman, to disobey the command of God. But you know the truth in all of these things is as God has always known. And from Sunday's service, we talked about <coughs> to a certain degree. I don't remember how far we got on it, really, but but it was mentioned, I know, at least once to remember that the Bible tells us. Um, and I didn't get all these scriptures, but you can, it's a good practice for you to look them up where the Bible says that the Lamb speaking of the Lamb of God or the Lamb of Covenant, which was involved in the Jewish uh, organization of the or the, the Jewish people um, into, um, into what we have and know in the Old Testament and the ones that are still the Jews, the Jewish nation then is in covenant with God and that covenant, although they broke covenant, God never broke covenant. He had to adjust things because they were supposed to be a part of a whole thing that God was doing in the earth, not to just deal with with sin, but to, to deal with Satan's tr transgression um, into uh, to try to overthrow the throne of God. I mean, that was his thing. So what you have to see is a lot of activity that goes on, even... Um, even rhetoric about um, what's true and not true or, you know, um, and I know that, that some of you have grown up in places where these things have been questioned for a long time, but they're not questioned here in me. They're not questioned because I grew up knowing the Bible. I knew up believing God. Um, there really doesn't make sense, even though it may seem so. It makes sense to those whose eyes are dark, are blinded, and their hearts are are darkened into things. Um, I mean, I went to college. I went through all these things. I I heard some of this, as I've said many times, uh, in the political places. But I also heard how they're changing history. These things are not because. I've read a lot of things, <laughs> a lot of things now that that are disavowed that ever happened. But it's, but it's like, wait a minute, I, w I, w I lived through that, you know. I had family who were in those wars. I had all these things. It's like, and you think, well, that's kind of petty, Sharon. No, it's not, because these things can come in subtly when we decide to to question, um, not just authority. But we, when we're brought into a thing that, that we, and even the, the culture doesn't lend itself to a family situation. And not every family situation was ideal. Mine wasn't. Um, but there was a truth in there that, that, that prevailed over those things. And it was the activity of, of God in Christ and in the Holy Spirit. It was the Bible. Uh, we had a we had a sure place to look at, and if you look in the Bible, you're going to find a lot of a lot that God talks about the things that are going on right now, and He knew all that. And then we want to question, well, why does God do this? It's because we want things to turn on a like they used to say, turn on a dime for us. But we're a part of a whole. We're part of we're part of not just a part of a nation, but we're part of a world that Jesus died for the whole world. And before the foundations of the world, the lamb, that blood that would be introduced into the Jewish covenants, the lamb was slain. And it was a, it was a, it was a foretaste of what God had already done in Christ Jesus, where Jesus had already stood, where the Holy Spirit was already, they were all in agreement, the activity of the Godhead. I praise God for it. I don't, I don't apologize for it at all, and you shouldn't either. It's where your strength comes from. These other things are going to fail. They're going to fall. It has happened to all of us in our individual lives when we tried to come our way and, and just kind of let God tag along. But the truth of these things, they're beautiful. You talk about great insight into things. You talk about, you know, people wanting to go out and, you know, hallelujah. They want to find out what's in the heavenlies. Well, the heavenlies of 
there's a lot more in the heavenlies than you can go to in a spaceship. <laughs> Hallelujah. But anyway, I think there's some things that I, that we need to get our attention on today. And I guess that's what I want to, to say. I'm not sure that I'll get it all said just the way it should. But I believe there's some things that we need to, as, as Christians, as the church, um, as those who've been raised to know that God is God and that Jesus was real and that he, he did die on the cross. He did rise from the grave. He did ascend back to the Father. The Holy Spirit was sent, regardless of how people want to take a church doctrine and spin it. There is a truth that remains. And uh, when you just get totally off the word of God, then you, you might as well write your own book. And that's what a lot of people have done. And sometimes we try to do that in our circumstances and situations, too. And it just doesn't work. Um, there's a lot of, and this is, this is kind of like a saying, of, I guess, a simple word over something that's, that's very great. There's a great upheaval in the world today. Uh, there's war. There's war, not rumors of war, but war. There's a war, and it's it's uh, it's in the area of Israel. It's in the area of that those places where a lot of the Bible activity took place all around. Um, and um, you know, the wise men came from a lot of those places. <laughs> so and. Uh, all the pharaohs and all that sort of stuff. So you see, you're gonna you're gonna see that we're that here at the times which I would say are times of the end of 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 what God had purposed, and that would open up and cause the real end for the activity of Satan. Um, when time is no more, then he has nothing left. So he's kind of in a in a bind, so to speak. I've started to use a colloquialism, but I guess I won't put that out there. But um, because I I just want to say I believe that we are in the last days, plural. Um, there are some things that will take place, but there are things that you and I who have some foreknowledge of that, and I believe there are many who do really that maybe don't even know, but they are aware. That, that things are are changing, yes, but they're changing away from God, away from things that we know, not because God wanted to make a bunch of rules, but he knew that they would be the demise of, of the human race as it was, and that there wasn't anything in man that could supersede what God had done. But with God, we he can cause us to triumph over all kinds of things. He's brought in his wisdom and men come to see it and, and understand it but then it's it's the way in us that always wants things twisted for our advantage there's nothing wrong having things done that, that are for good but when we want to to exclude god or exclude the people who led us is just because they had some issues well god doesn't have an issue it's satan that has an issue hallelujah not not god but anyway and these, these, um, what we're in is a type of a day when we need to guard. We need to be on guard, but we need to guard our hearts. Even Christians, you know, we want to put on the armor of God and fight. But, but if you you haven't guarded your heart, your heart, you know, you can get twisted in and out where you, where you can't operate quick, uh, op quickly. Maybe yes, but accurately in the things of God um, because you'll get into fear and not faith. Fear will cause you to, to waver. Fear will, will believe lies rather than uh, let the truth prevail in matters. Um, <laughs> but we've got to understand in this, this last day, especially as Christians, not just to live it for ourselves, but to, to be something. We have to be something. God has expectations in every one of us. And we can't let our minds talk us all on. Oh, God, 
Uh, that's that's from your mind. It's from conversations like your your mom or dad used to talk. At least that was more from probably my my uh, area of the country. But um, and there's there's fighting and feuding. There's hatred. There's accusations against people. We we don't have you know any tolerance if somebody doesn't think think like I do, or if they don't, their church service isn't just like mine, then I don't have, you know, there's just no hope for them. Well, that's, this, those things don't depend on you, but God entrusts us with some of those things to have his heart and to let our mouths be not speaking just from places that we don't understand or that we have no activity of mercy or love to be able to bring other people to places where they can hear and trust God and be able to give them good counsel, but don't be, don't try to be their rulers. Hallelujah. But bring them in places where that they can hear from God and be taught of the Lord and can learn the things of God and not just, you just want to make sure they're saved. Well, saved, they still have time to grow. They still have time to, to rejoice in the things, not just in the, in the that they don't do this or that anymore, because that temptation will come. But we've got to, we've got to be overcomers, and we have to, we have to be taught the ways of overcoming. It isn't a state of mind. It isn't a few words we say. But it is a trust and a love of God in us and the faith of God in us to make these steps. We have to understand the true things. These are just the things that God kind of put before me. So they may sound scattered, but somehow I know the Holy Spirit will bring them away. That um, we have to, to be in a place where we are, we never let face we're going to face things in these days. I guess this is what was said first. God said you're going to face these in in these days that will come that will come with the whole force of evil. But you've got to understand that you are never facing anything without the whole force of heaven already, not just backing you up, but in you to become a participant in and with in the things that are to come. The Old Testament says that goodness and mercy will follow us. You see, when you get, you begin to understand and value the activity of mercy, not just to get by, but understand the tenderness and yet the stability of having mercy, but also being able to be merciful. Because then you walk into to the things we see in Christ. You know, that's that's a part of our lives. It's not just a style, but it's it's a part of our life to have mercy, know mercy, be acquainted with mercy, have been a recipient of it so that we know how and can hear the Spirit of God to give mercy, to allow and be merciful in places that would sometimes just turn us counterclockwise and tick us off. Well, our ticking off can't exist anymore. And no matter what happens, um, that we have to we have to have these things that are that I wrote here. Yes, faith through comes through hearing. So some of this hearing will establish some things, but it's going to have to work through love, and it won't be your human love because we already know that human love can get exasperated. Human love can have an opinion about somebody else's activity of love. Um, you know, we don't. There's no mercy to allow. We want to have mercy when we don't do it right. When our when we get a little miffed and anger gets a hold of us, rather than the peace of God, the truth um, that we we can even snare not only ourselves but other people, and realize that that peace is not just a calmness, but it's a state of being where that we we have a stability that we can work from. So that um, so that goodness and mercy will follow us, uh, no matter what we're in or what's trying to get a hold of us, that we can remain not just on an even scale, but we can know how to uh, be in relationship with God. 
that we need to um, there's a song well <laughs> I can remember it perhaps because we used to, we used to sing it in church just as a and from the songbook but I can remember it in the days is uh, youth groups and things like that we'd sit around um, camp uh, campfires and things like this and we'd always uh, be you know bind us together lord bind us together we get all sway and swishy and holding each other's hand and bind us together in love and it was all it was a beautiful thing we'd end up you know crying praising god and all these kinds of things but there are things sometimes that still operate in us that we can sing those songs so but we we're the one that <laughs> break the binds that that were being created there by getting mad because somebody <laughs> was doing something we didn't like so i believe there's some things that we're going to face here as the church and as christians before the and i'm going to say the word we won't have time to talk about it but <laughs> uh before the rapture of the church um but there's some places right now that we need to begin to to make sure that we don't get kind of side side swiped. There's a scripture that says, um, I will fear no evil. Now we can say it, but we we need to not just say it, we believe it, and because we believe it, it comes out of our mouth in faith, power. Hallelujah. So we're going to face some things where that, well, oh, if you're new, you've offered. No, we're not just quoting it. We really are able to see by the power of the Holy Spirit that works in us. We can recognize things. We can know how to respond um, in our, first of all, in our hearts. And, um, and even in when we cry out to God, when we realize that everything in us wants to be not sure what's going to happen next. Oh my goodness, what, what am I going to do? All these kinds of things that we can quiet ourselves and say, you know, find the scriptures. <laughs> Though I, you know, I'm around the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Oh, hallelujah. That personal relationship with God has to grow. Can't just be what we used to do. Um, can't just quote scriptures that we always can quote, but there's a lot we need to know. We need to be living in us. So that when we quote them, when we begin to work like Ephesians 6 soldiers in prayer before God, or when we're in the places the enemy wants to overwhelm our minds, our hearts, even our bodies, that, um, you know, these scriptures are right there. We don't have to put them together for logic's sake, but they're right there. You know, I will fear no evil. I've been in several of those situations lately, and some perhaps that I wasn't aware of, but um, even so, in the face of some things that were fearing, not fearing, but concerned about me, um, and I realized that in the place of that, um, in fact, I, I, I sat in the, the emergency room waiting place and had opportunity, you know, there were a lot of things to look, see, you know, whatever. But I found myself saying there, but I also, when I was back in a, a, one of the rooms in the emergency room, and I was all by myself and hooked up to this, that, and the other. Uh, I heard coming right out of my heart uh, words that sounded a whole lot like, and they were, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And I could have quoted Psalm 23, but I began to just speak, you know, that whatever this is, the life that is in me, the blood that has saved and healed me, and I just began to say how many times that God had healed me, how many times he had delivered me from death, how many times the accident didn't happen, or if it happened, it didn't kill me, how many times I've been protected, how many times God has had to deliver me out of my own 
<laughs> we use the word psyche, whatever. But anyway, it's, it's like it's a wonderful time in his presence anytime, not just to remember something but to even let God add more scriptures, add more things by the Spirit from your mouth that give more, um, the word that's in front of me is, is impotence, but I mean motion. Give more motion to things that have happened to your life that, that maybe we've forgotten. The words that have been spoken over us, the things that God himself has said to us. Um it wasn't so much just to just to quiet you know to quiet ourselves no they come from a place of assurance they come from a place of trust and belief that though other people may have said a lot of things about us they may have they may have hurt may have caused us to think that we this that or the other about ourselves but it's not what we think it's the mind of christ let this mind be in you, which was in Christ, he, Jesus. He thought it not to be robbery, to be equal with God, to be called son, etc., etc. I I quote the book of Ephesians. I used to qu quote it more accurately than I do now. That's not from the book of Ephesians. But, but I've made myself go back because there were just so many uh, in Ephesians, Colossians, Galatians, oh, Goodness, all the New Testament. Then I go back to the Old Testament that gave insight, that those things in the New Testament gave me insight into how they were, that God had always been that way. So if you've not been before the Word of God, except just to read a scripture or to try to feel better about something, find your place back with the Lord, with your walk so that you can stand in these places with confidence and in truth. Because we're in a place now where that we just said that we need to guard our heart. It says, I believe in the Amplified, I'm making a short word. We, I have to guard my heart with all diligence. The reason why is it's always been true, but right now the activity of Satan has been given the freedom to, um, to walk among us and speak... Um, things that are not true, they're not God, and to, um, you know, down our faith in God, our trust, that this is all, that you don't, you just don't have any, you're, you're just dumb. Well, hey, some of us have got <laughs> degrees too, but I'll tell you what, I don't go to anybody's degree, or I don't even go to, um, just because of all I've heard all of my life. Because you and I can mess those things up. But I tell you what, there's a there's some wonderful teaching out there. But there's also some wonderful prophetic activity that we need to know. And there's also teachings um, that still need to continue. So that we find ourselves going to the word of God. So Satan is still out. <laughs> to conquer and take over God. Well, he he can't learn, but we can. We can't fall into these traps. The world is open. That's why a lot of the things that even sometimes we in churches people think we're old fashioned or something or or that we don't love people. No, it's not a matter we don't love people. But we love God because we pray that they not stay in some of those places that they think it's all right, that the mindset has come in to think that, well, <laughs> that there are all kinds of species out there. Well, they're not. <laughs> there may be species, but they're, they are not open to the human <laughs> uh, vernacular. So I'll let myself go there. We need to know, we need to let faith, we need to let grace, we need to let hope, all these things work in us with a diligence we need to know what truth is not to be dogmatic but so that when we pray we're not praying um amiss um the holy spirit um the holy spirit can become like we we when we receive the holy spirit like the baptism of the holy spirit um we think we've just got something uh, 
But we didn't just get something. We got the thing that Jesus died, rose again, and was so excited that we see in John chapter 15 through 17, start at 14, but he begins to talk about these things. I've said it many times, but maybe it's time you look at it and, and see that he was. He knew that he was going. He had to go away. He came back, substantiated what he had to, and ascended back to the Father so that the Holy Spirit could come. The Holy Spirit is, wow, hallelujah. The Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, the Father and the Son, <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, but the Holy Spirit, he works. He does, takes everything and brings it to a place where where we can walk and and make progress in this walk. We have authority. We have authority in Jesus' name, but we don't just use that name for our authority. We use that thing, we use his name in the fact that we believe what he did in and of himself, what he spoke, why he was sent. He is the word made flesh. The word of God is not a, just a book. It isn't just something to be learned or to have classes in uh, or to take something like faith, a word, the, and use faith to try to make it a... Uh, Something that doesn't that we can operate on our own. We can't do these things without what the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit works these things to where they're alive. The devil is going to try everything he can. Satan will try all he can to to block us from these things. And these are the things I'd like to just say. Um, we have. Um, In the church, yeah, but we have in us the authority, it says, to bind and to loose. The spirit of the, of the divine, the almighty, um, is with us to empower the words, the word of God, what the word of God did to cause those words to have power and authority over the enemy. What Jesus did was he defeated. When he rose again, he defeated the power of death and hell. He defeated the power of the devil. He can't tell you the truth. He can try to use words that are truth, but from his lips, they have no power unless we give them power. Uh, he is, as the Bible says, Jesus said he's, he's the father of lies. He can come with all kind of eloquence of words, but because he's speaking them, he's speaking it for evil purposes. He's going to twist it. He's going to cause us to be twisted in our perspective of things. Um, there's no consistency unless it's from the spirit of truth. Um, hallelujah. I just jotted these things down kind of hurriedly, so... But I want to speak again, something that I know I was alluding to and speaking to on Sunday, about the, 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 the secrets of the blood. I'm not going to go into what they are, but when we realize that there's power in the blood, <laughs> we even sing this in our churches, this power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. <laughs> hallelujah <laughs> he is that lamb was the word of God hallelujah his blood speaks still but those are where those that term came to me that there were those secrets in the power of the blood um, we could go back to Genesis and realize that all those things I to me, sometimes they, they seem like mysteries, but maybe they are. But I believe when you let your relationship with the Lord Jesus and the activity of the Holy Spirit, um, that you can speak those things not like the world speaks. I think that darkness has, has caused those words, and people have used them to just 
portray God. And um, they didn't understand the love of God. They didn't understand the power of God. Um, that he just did a thing and created something and he didn't know what was going to happen. Oh, hallelujah, that's not true. So he's he's known exactly, so he knows exactly who we are. And I don't have time to say a lot. I may have overwhelmed my time already. Um, so I'm not going to say that, but we could just read these things and understand that to be the creative, to be created by God. Um here, when we lose touch with God, then we grasp for things that aren't real. Um, we try to alter things because there's not a faith in God. There's not a trust in God. There's not a reality that God is God. We aren't. And some of these false activities that Satan has put into the earth, they aren't. Um, and I don't have time to get into that, so I won't. But he is the creator, and he does know, and he has loved. Well, then why did he do all this? Because he was not a dictator. He was a creator, and he creates from what's in him, that power of, of faith, and, he, and from his word. Hallelujah. He was personally involved with our creation. He formed and shaped what we would be like. Like he called other pe other creations this. He didn't go down and create an elephant. He did no, but with us he created something in his own image and in his own likeness. And we need to believe when we walk like that, there is no evil that can befall me that will be able to destroy me. So we need to, that's in our hearts faith we want faith for healing we want faith to get cards cars we want a faith to pass our test that's okay too but faith is not a commodity it's actually the activity of of god it makes us able oh yeah well i couldn't you couldn't believe this remember they had these books come out and they did they have you know we'd speak these words and and it would and keep doing it and doing it and living this thing like this, then that would do it. Well, yeah, faith, faith works. Some things work, but without God, you don't, you don't have life. And light isn't in you, because God said when He stepped out after some things that Jesus before that when when the Lamb was slain before the foundations of the world, the things that He had purposed in. And that took place. Then he stepped out and began to say, let there be light. Whew. And light can go a lot of, around with a lot of things. It's, you know, so we can, I need to go on, so I will. But I just want to add this too. That God not only created these things, you have to realize that he recreated everyone who would believe in Jesus and come through the shedding of his blood by faith Hallelujah! that we were recreated in Christ Jesus the church all those things were things that were that were implemented but you know when you get to love the Word of God and you see things from that perspective it, they aren't they aren't just things we do they aren't just things that we perform we don't give money. Um, God doesn't need our money. But there are things that these these things work in us, in this realm. Hallelujah. But God is, he's superior in all those places. So, um, the Bible tells us that before the foundations of the world, the lamb was slain. And that's what I'd like to remind you of today. That all these things that are happening, they're for real. Don't get so occupied that you, don't, that you let your spiritual relationship with the Lord Jesus, with the Word of God, with the power of the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, don't let them become like 
things that you just do to make you think you're a Christian. These things are most important in these days. And although I didn't get to the, the fullness of what I would have liked to have today, because I, I realize I'm, I'm a little bit slower to get through things, but it's, it's okay. <laughs> um, God loved you, knew you, wrote, and when I say wrote, he, there's a way he writes it was different, just like it was for giving the commandments to, um, to Moses. Um, but he speaks, he is light, <laughs> he engraves things, he, he puts things in motion. So no matter what goes on every day with you, there is nothing in this earth and nothing in it, even activities of the church that don't line up that can separate you from God. But when you live in these places, you need to know him. Um, I'm going to go to one scripture in Jeremiah as I close. In Jeremiah chapter 29, it's one you probably know. But like sometimes when we know them, we say them and we rejoice over them for a minute. But these words are alive and full of power. When Jesus spoke, the things that he spoke were alive and full of power. And when his blood was shed, it was, um, <laughs> it was the testimony that before the foundations of the world, the lamb was slain. What Satan had come came in the evident the area of heaven and did. He was cast out of heaven. He fell. Oh, there are all kinds of things that, that if we want to make them fit our scenario. They fit God's. So if you know him, then this this will be easy to, to hear and see. But Jeremiah chapter 29. Hallelujah. No matter what, I'm just going to say this, no matter what comes to engage you, I want you to remember that God has already won the battle. We may fight some things, but God has won the issue over those things. If we have his faith and faith in him, hallelujah, that no matter what everyday thing we have to face or you go through, and the things that are taking place in the earth today, and that will increase. There may be some places where it seems like it's not so, but it, but it, it is. There's going to be a time of great activity in the kingdom of God to cause men and women to have the ability in all places of the world. And they're there by millions and billions of, that we don't know, who've already come to know. Jesus is their Lord and Savior, and to know that God is God, and that dictatorships and even constitutions <laughs> um, can be manipulated, but God is sovereign over them all. We don't do it in ourselves, but we join together in the name of Jesus. We begin to pray, seek his will, his wisdom, begin to um to learn and to grow ourselves in things that we have let go. Go back. Don't go back to go back, but go it back into God. Go back into the Spirit of God. Ask forgiveness. He's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins, cleanse us from unrighteousness. We may have to change a few of our ways again, but that's all right. We may have to change the way we think and the way we, we talk to begin to speak to God that we believe him so that the motion of the words in our mouth become the power that will come to pass. 
through our love for God. And if we are, have a true love for God, we're going to grow in ways to know how to love one another or how to speak or deal with other people in manners that don't create a place that the enemy could hinder them or hinder us. Um, that we need to understand that what God has told us is not just a, a, a thing in a book, although it is in a book, <laughs> that it is the truth and it stands forever. Uh, you and I may need to clean up some things in our lives. We shouldn't, oh, we shouldn't, we should, we should come thanking God that he is God and that his love doesn't change but it can change us. Um, we have to know that he's good. And it's not just like, oh, God is good. God is so good. Yeah, we can say it like that, but we better, something in our spirit, something that, that rises up from the end of, inside of us is not just a, a speaking of it, but it becomes power in the midst of what is being spoken um, there are a lot of things going in the world that have these places, but I want to say to us tonight in Jeremiah 29, verse 11, this God was promising the children of Israel, so Jeremiah was prophesying this before. It says, For I know the thoughts in the plans that I have for you. This is God talking. So sometimes our plans, well, God always wants it. Don't, don't, that's the devil talking. You don't know. But if you know <clears throat> how much God loves you, and it's not because of your circumstances may be bad, then you think, well, he doesn't love me very much. No, there's a lot of things and a lot of people who have caused that to come to pass in your life, not God. <coughs> and sometimes because we didn't know any better, we walked into those places. And sometimes when we knew better, into those places because we were afraid for someone else. If you're afraid for someone else, it won't help them. Get the faith of God for them. And you can walk with them with more effectiveness. <coughs> Excuse me. I didn't bring any water in with me, so I'm not. <laughs> for I know the thoughts and plans I have for you, says the Lord. These thoughts and these plans are for your welfare and for your peace. And they're not for evil. Don't think that you've out-eviled. God is more powerful than evil. He's already won the war, and the victory we will be, it will be manifested. It just has to span the time frame that God gave to this earth and to be born, and those that will come now and, and, and for the times to come. Hallelujah. But the times for the church and the times of those of us who confess the Lord Jesus as Lord and Savior and have moved into the things of the Holy Spirit and moved in these places of responsibility where we have confessed that we believe and we've confessed that we would be like him and these things, hallelujah, we have to understand that these are the things that prepare us to be able to able to be caught up in the activity of the church. The church is what will be taken out of the world for a short while. Hallelujah. So we need to leave records. Hallelujah. That's why we love the activity of God in that's in the Jewish nations. That's why the, the devil still hates them. It's because they, they have an eternal heritage. <laughs> Hallelujah. That will always outwit him. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You think, well, it didn't seem to. Well, that's because of all the other things that took place. It's not necessarily being a history major, but it's being a place in, that God has, has put these out before the people all over the world in times and places. But he's, he's especially put it out 
to us who hear the gospel so regularly, but we haven't heard it. And those who have been brought up in sometimes in seminaries, sometimes even in Pentecostal seminaries, they get into the to the the uh, the history of a thing, or they get caught up in their positions of having to deal with finances and building and holding all these things together, and they lose the relationship they had with God. Some don't, but some don't have the, <laughs> I don't know how to say it, just be merciful. Be merciful. You didn't maybe have to go through all those things, but if you did, be merciful because God has been merciful to you. He will be merciful to them, and don't give them any other thing to believe than that. <laughs> it says, then you'll call upon me, I better finish this further one. For the thoughts and plans for your welfare and peace and not for evil. To give you hope in your final outcome. And that would work for any generation. But our final outcome is very close to the end of things. That will lead into that period of time. Where the devil will have a spree in the earth. And it will probably try to destroy everybody he can. But we can leave a record here in the earth. There can be a voice that speaks prayers that are in the atmosphere that that will be will, will speak to people. Hallelujah. Praise God. I will, I'm going on and on here. Then you will call upon me and you will come and pray to me and I will hear you and I will heed you. If he said this to Jeremiah of the people that were to come, then we're, we're a part of that people to come. The ones who read this. And hear his voice. Then you will seek me, inquire for, and require me as a vital necessity. And find me when you search for me with all your heart. 14 just starts out, I will be found by you, says the Lord. And I will release you from captivity and gather you from all the nations and all the places to which I've driven you, says the Lord, and I'll bring you back to the place from which I've caused you to be carried away into captivity. And this is the hope to the Jewish people in particular. Well, I hope, I hope that you just love to understand that there is victory in Jesus. We used to sing that. Victory in Jesus, my Savior forever. He saved me and he bought me with his redeeming love. Hallelujah. <laughs> I have some of those to keep me going because <laughs> I was raised the way I was with a songbook in my hand and with musical parents. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we have to fight in these days. We have to fight this fight of faith. It might not just be a phrase, but it's the truth. When we understand the truth, not only of what, how we are to fight um, in prayer and by being in the Word of God, believing God, trusting God, letting Him lead us and not just run into something to try to get something done that we know needs to be done, but let Him lead us because the activity of the enemy is greater than we, we've understood. Um, these aren't just words. This is the victory. It is the source. It says it is. It says it is even the victory. And what is that victory? It's our faith. It's our faith. Even it will overcome the world. I forgot the last word. It will overcome the world. That victory. What is it that will overcome the world? Our faith. Hallelujah. Working through love. Hallelujah. By the power of God through the Spirit. Not just that we would be saved. But as many as will. Will come. Hallelujah. Because maybe they'll have to hold some of them through the time of, of great trials and great troubles. But oh hallelujah. Lived with power. Faith and prayed over. Praying over not just what will happen in our days. But what will yet come. Hallelujah. Whew. Praise God. <laughs> the Holy Spirit will work with power. I believe we need to know these things more than ever before. Believe them. Walk in them. Grow in them. 
and let God be more victorious than we ever even even could try to comprehend. It'll become reality in our hearts, and I believe it'll become reality in our eyes. We'll see it come to pass. Good night.